G'day guys, we've got a question on sequences today, which is asking us to give the values of k so that the sequence 6k54 is, first of all, an arithmetic sequence and second of all, a geometric sequence. Now what this question is going to require is a basic understanding of what constitutes both an arithmetic and geometric sequence, and then knowing how to exploit that little bit of knowledge to solve for k. So the best way to explain these questions are by doing them. So let's get started. Number one. So an arithmetic sequence. Now an arithmetic sequence is a sequence which goes up by a constant difference. For example, we can describe an arithmetic sequence as t to the n plus 1 is equal to t to the n, the number before it, plus some kind of constant difference, d, with t the first term equaling a. So that's our sort of recursive definition of an arithmetic sequence. So what we can see though is that we've got this constant difference d which will be the difference between each term and it is similar every single time. So what we can do is we can exploit this in the case of um, this sort of question and go, well, the difference between 54 and k, so we can go 54 subtract k has to be equal to the difference between k and 6. So now we've set up a little equality here. We can just use some basic algebra and solve it. So I'm going to take the k's to the right-hand side where I have 2k. So I'm going to add k to both sides, and then I'm going to add 6 to the other side. So 54 plus 6 is 60. And we can do both, we can divide both sides by 2. And we have k equaling 30. Great, because we can see that the difference between 6 and 30 is 24. And sorry, and 30 and 54 is 24 as well. So you can see that that will make an arithmetic sequence. So, part two. Okay, so a geometric sequence, we're going to um, come up with our little um, definition for it first. It's exactly the same, except rather than have a constant difference, we have a constant ratio. So we can say that the next term in a sequence can be found by taking the term that we have and multiplying it by some ratio. We're going to call it R with, again, t1 equaling some constant a. Cool. So the way we can exploit this one is we know that um, 6 has to be multiplied by something to get to k, and k has to be multiplied by something to get to 54. And those two somethings have to be the same thing. So we can say, because we have a common ratio, that 54 divided by k is going to have to equal k divided by 6. So what we can do here is, again, like we did before, we can use L a few simple steps of algebra to solve it. We can multiply both sides by 6, and we have 324 on k equals k. We can take the k across, so we're going to have k squared equals 324, and then we'll take the square root of both sides, so we're going to have k is equal to the plus or minus square root of 324, which is equal to plus or minus 18. So. With this last one, because k could be positive or negative and, cause, and square it and still get a positive number, we could come from a negative 18, square it and get positive 324, or we could come from a positive 18, square it and get 324. So it's important that we write down both solutions. So we could say that k could be equal to 18, or k could be equal to negative 18, 
because all that this means is that our common ratio, if it's negative 18, will be negative. Probably, well, it will be negative 3 and positive 3 if it was regular 18. But all it's asking is for the values of k. It's not asking for the sequences. So we have one value of k here and two values of k here. With this one here, I'm predicting will be the one that most kids would forget. So just a quick run through guys, if I had this question in a test, what I would do for each part is I would define what an arithmetic sequence is or a geometric sequence. And then I would use that to try and think about how I could exploit this definition to solve for k. In one example, we showed that the common difference is the same. For the other example, we showed that the common ratio is the same. And then we use a little bit of algebra to solve. So all in all, not a very complicated question, but you know, if you have never seen one like this before, it's easy to get flustered, especially under exam conditions. So I'd advise to practice this one, guys. But until next time, just keep practicing, 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 and most of all, definitely enjoy your maths.